All right, parents and students of World History 2 Honors and Psychology, hello, I'm Mr. Kamitsky, and welcome to my Back to School Night video. All right, let's just start off a little bit about myself. I'm married uh, with two boys, Alexander and Andrew. Uh, I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but I've been here two-thirds of my life. Um, uh, I've been in education for about 23 years. Um, 21 of them at Robinson Secondary, but my first two years I was at Akatink Academy, which is a school for students from inner city DC with emotional disabilities. When I came to Robinson Secondary, I actually ended up wearing three hats while I was here. My first couple of years, my first six or seven years, I was a special education teacher, uh, teaching basic skills, English and world history. Then they asked me to take over the autism program for about six years I was there, uh, being acting department chair for uh, autism and ID program and then I just wanted to get back into the classroom and that uh, there was an opportunity to teach world history to honors and I got to develop in uh, this psychology course um, I have three degrees and you see there um, on my side and how I like to what I call sharpen the saw a little was it Stephen Covey I'd listen to podcasts and audiobooks all the time I, it's about a half hour drive to work so I, I, I like to learn all the time um, and Dan Carlin Hardcore History is probably my favorite out of the, all the audio books. Um, I'm not trying to brag. I am level 42 in Pokemon Go. So we got that going for me. And a few years back, I, I made a bucket list. And one, uh, one item on my bucket list was become a world champion at something. And here on the right, that moment, there I am. I won the world master championship at a purple belt level. I'm brown belt now. But that moment right here on the bottom right, that's the moment I won the world championship. So I got it. That was pretty cool. All right, let's move on. Let's get into the curriculum a little bit. So I'm going to start with psychology. And really the, the creation of this class just kind of evolved in the understanding that we go through eight stages of life, uh, according to Eric Erickson in development. And with each stage, we actually have a crisis that we go through. And I was asking the students, you know, do you know what your crisis is? You know, and really their crisis, I mean, you hear middle-aged people with mid-age crisis or, you know, um, but the uh, all students from the or people from the age of 12 to 19 for the most part are going through what's called identity versus rule confusion. And they're basically just trying to figure themselves out. I think this class is perfect to help them navigate and reflect on their own selves. And maybe they can figure out who they are uh, at least a little bit better than when they walk into the class. Um, what we do this, and I use a lot of vehicles to help teach and have them reflect on themselves. So, and these are the units that I'm gonna go, and these are the projects that I have to, that I'm gonna use this year. Brain Choice Project, more or less students are going to understand and learn and connect uh, 16 components and parts of the brain and their functions. Um, we're going to, this Lifespan Project students, I'm going to ask them to interview eight people within their life uh, based on each stage of the development and they're going to have similar questions. What's really cool about this is the students really through these interviews, they get to actually see the progression, similar questions, but different. There's an evolution of responses and what people value. And it's a pretty good project. So good, in fact, I've had multiple students tell me that this is the best project they've ever done in their life. Not just this class, not this just a year, but it's the best thing they've ever done in terms of a project for school. So I like that. So I'm keeping it. <laughs> um, I will ask students to do pay it forward and more or less, um, uh, have them do something good for somebody that they normally wouldn't do. And I asked for five of those, so we'll hit that. And I'm just gonna jump ahead a little bit. Um, that formulated re research question on the bottom, that is our final assessment. And I like it because it's fascinating where students get to choose anything they connect to psychology. Say they play lacrosse and they try to find some psychological something, or if they're just worried about, or they wanna figure out something um, they have the opportunity to do the research and come up with five, uh, three valid sources and then present it to the class. That's how we end the year is students presenting something that they're most interested in dealing with psychology and whether it's uh, uh, progressing beyond what we already learned or something even new. It's, it's a nice way to end uh, the year. Um, okay, so oops. here's the class and how it really looks. I try very hard to have uh, activities going at least once a week, but not, if not any class that actually pertains to the lesson itself. Um, we start off every class with uh, journals. I give students about seven to 10 minutes to write their journal for the day. And what's neat about this is in the end, we're gonna go to futureme.com and students are gonna send that journal to, I usually recommend like their 30th birthday and just so they can read it again. And maybe even their 45th birthday, you can send it to them multiple times. 
We're gonna do all kinds of stuff. One main, one multiple uh, uh, one main thing I want to point in is that um, all the quizzes. I'm under the opinion that we have access to you know all the information we need. So I don't really want my students to just regurgitate information on a multiple choice test. I think it's useless at this point because we, we have that uh, in, our, in our pockets. So what I want the, the students to do is have an open note quizzes, but apply that information to higher level thinking. So, and again, reflection. Uh, and we'll come back to that a little bit later. Um, every Friday that we have psychology, at the last 45 minutes of the class, I have Mindfulness Friday. And essentially what I'm asking students to do is play games with each other. Um, whether it's categories, whether it's taboo, Jenga. Uh, we've had students even blindfold Jenga, but they're communicating without screens. And that's my one rule is no screens. And, and I told you about the final quote project. So if you really, uh, when I get a hold of me, this is the best and most efficient email. Uh, I check it periodically throughout the day and definitely before I go to bed. And I usually respond within 24 hours, usually that night. So just that's the best way to get a hold of me. Look forward to working with you. But let me tell you about World History 2. All right, so welcome to World History 2. <laughs> Honors. So this curriculum is a little bit different than Gen Ed. Um, and we are actually working on skills. Again, this is kind of like a, the same class where we're not really focused on what I call regurgitation of information, um, we actually want to apply this information and use analysis. So um, students are not going to take the SOL, so we're going to focus on writing. We're going to focus on analysis, and we're going to use these courses or these units to as vehicles to teach skills. And a lot of it's going to be through writing, and we'll, uh, we'll work on that throughout the year. Okay. Um, the grading in the syllabus, basically it's going to be uh, a rolling grade book it's gonna last throughout the year and your grades are there so I'm really encouraging you to start off strong uh, because it's harder to dig yourself out we won't have a midterm we're not gonna have a final exam we're gonna have a project uh, this is an honors course so you're gonna get 0. 0.5 added on to the end of the year but it's a little bit different than in than in middle school where I believe everybody was in an honors curriculum this is we're really stepping it up here you're gonna be challenged you're gonna learn but you're preparing to take IB courses you're preparing to take AP courses so you're gonna start reading higher level text you're gonna do a lot of writing and a lot of analysis and thinking and showing us that you can think um, so the activities, we're going to be primary, secondary sources. We're going to find the value between them all. Uh, some lecture and discussion. Uh, a lot of interaction within the students in terms of salons. I call them Socratic salons or the Socratic seminars. But I use Socratic salons, which are a lot smaller, tables of six. And, uh, and we'll explain that. Um, expository writing is one of the main uh, focal points where we can have students write a thesis paragraph, but all the way up to a five paragraph essay um, in a certain uh, structure. Um, command terms, if you're gonna go to the IB world, uh, students are gonna be exposed to command terms. And basically it's using terms like analyze, but there's a set structure in your response, and I'll show you through that. Um, and another piece is OPCVL, or uh, origin, purpose, context, value, and limitations. And we have already started this. What I want your child to look at any piece of information and think about who is the author, what is the purpose of the author, what was their audience, intended audience, and as a historian, when we're looking at it, what value and what or what limitations does this artifact have for us? And I mean, I, I use examples like Fox News versus CNN, and like, and then I have a picture that shows the whole thing, uh, like one picture here, one, and I'll show it this picture right here. So, you know, we could say this is the whole picture, but one bias side, side has this picture, one bias side has this, and I want your child to understand that the, where the biases lie, but then we can actually see the whole picture from looking at multiple angles. So that's something we're gonna be working on with intent this year. If you need, if your child needs help, I'm available pretty much any day after school by appointment, uh, Monday, Wednesday, fr Thursday are the ideal days because there's a, a, a bus that'll come take your child home. Um, I will say from four to eight every day, that's my family time. I'm spending time with family. I will not be checking emails or responding to emails during that time. Now, if your child stays after school and I stay after four, that's okay. Um, but just understand if um, that's, that's my time. Uh, and I'm gonna leave you with this. This is what students have said um, former students have wrote to me, and I'll let you read this. And this is probably my favorite because I really think this is what it is. 
some students come in here thinking, yeah, and they've never really been challenged. I do believe your child will be challenged, but they'll be happy. Thank you, and I look forward to working with you.